for the people who are out there who have something to say and want to feel enough energy to go to the trouble of sharing and interacting and, and talking about it a lot. They're people who st still are trying to figure things out. This is kind of the idea. Could one of you tell me what this idea is from what you heard yesterday or what you've read or what you see? What's going on here? I kind of understood it as we have two we have two things that are constantly going on. We have an ideal that we're trying to reach, and we have the reality of what's really going on with us and with the world and other things. And what I interpreted your message as was that there's different ways to deal with the fact that those aren't really the same thing. Is that that gap is kind of where we get stuck. <laughs> Why is that? Because sometimes, sometimes we're aware of it. We're aware that there's a gap, and other times we're not, not necessarily to any fault of our own, but just um, just how we, we are as an individual and where we are progressing. And so that gap creates a lot of confusion and in the process a lot of hurt. Somebody yeah. else? Yeah. In Michael? my life, at times I have ignored the reality, and I've just stuck to the ideal instead of facing what is actually there. Why, just, why do you think you did that? Was that on purpose or? Not always, maybe sometimes, yeah. but sometimes it's just, it's easier to assume everything is going okay and it, everything is the ideal, like I want it to be. But, yeah, I don't know. Sometimes it's hard to, to face the reality. I've seen it both in my life and in other people's lives where they not only acknowledge that there's a gap, but they just kind of accept that that's how it's always going to be and then they just give up whether it's um, trying to overcome it or um, trying to deal with it. They just kind of accept reality and just stay there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, go to reality and stay there. Now that... Yeah. Just eliminate the ideal. Mm -hmm. we, we're, I don't think we're saying that we don't want to believe in reality. I think what, you, what I hear you saying is uh, level one is when we are... Uh, Focus on reality. Excuse me. Focus on the ideal so heavily that we aren't really dealing with the real, and there can be innocent reasons for that. Some of it is just personal growth, uh, and then as, and then you encounter reality, and you it kind of shakes you up, and that's when you see the gap. And there are different ways of dealing with it. One of the things that I have a hard time with um, is when the primary answers that we hear don't actually help me. Um, and I'm not saying that they never do because I can think of lots of times when they have helped me. I have the hardest time um, when it doesn't seem to matter what I do because even if I am doing all of the things I'm supposed to do, even if I'm, li if, even if I'm trying to force myself to live in the ideal, it doesn't really work. My biggest struggle is feeling like that it's a hopelessly impassable gap. That no matter what you do, you can't cross. Exactly. And even when we don't understand the purpose, even if we don't see it ourselves, we're making steps are, towards. Are you saying that part of the purpose is to struggle without knowing what the purpose is? Absolutely. I think, I think that's why. Why, why, does, why is that part of the plan? I think... Um, you know, why, the gap, why is there a gap? And it just makes me, uh, it, it's because it forces us to turn to God. The, the gap is such a silly word for what we're talking about because that's just a, a kind of symbolic way of talking about extremities. What, what do we mean extremity? So, so something, something that I've just been thinking about this whole time is like the gap and when, like when you talk about extremities and and the struggle, and I think it's honestly the struggle to learn truth, because I don't know. For me, when I think of idea like the ideal level one, and then also level two, just reality, I see those work in my life for a negative effect in my life. So I will have ideals. I will think of ways that I sh like. I need to be like a perfectionist, but then I will let skepticism come into my life, and I will hear the lies of Satan telling me everything that is wrong with me. And 
the times that I see that gap close, and I, I'm really grateful that like when we talk about level three, the real ideal, it's it kind of changes my perspective. It's not my ideal, it's the real one, it's the true one. Something that makes life a lot harder is when we have great expectations for things. When our ideal is, is so far-fetched um, and the gap is so much bigger from reality. It was uh, an African-American football player and he was like, you guys don't let, you don't share the priesthood. And I was like, I know what the priesthood is, but I didn't know anything about us not being able to share. And I didn't know those questions. So when that like ideal popped, it was a time of turning to the Lord, having to, to I have no clue, I have no direction, nowhere to go. And then it's finding that process of, okay, God, like I, it unravels so much. It's the fact that I didn't know about it, so what else I don't know? And I started just questioning everything. And it, it really threw me for a loop because then I questioned, okay, is the Book of Mormon true? All those types of questions. I can't think that I've ever struggled with coming to that knowledge of blacks in the priesthood or of the Book of Abraham or of any of these things. I struggle much more with the very internal realizations yeah, yeah. Or, or fears um, that don't really fit with the plan, like, I'm a terrible person, I'm a terrible father, I can't do this. You know, that's much more threatening to me because it, it's, it's, it's me telling myself that I can't make the ideal. God can't even make me the ideal. And I know for me when I'm fighting real and ideal, and I'm wondering, you know, am I there yet? And sometimes I know, sometimes I know they're real. And my ideal clashes with that, and I'm just in this, this fight. It's like raw repentance, changing my ideals to God's, because that's what's best for me. And I think when I'm in that struggle of meeting God's expectations, it's really easy to come so hard on ourselves and come down on ourselves and think, you know, does God love me? Hmm. Maybe this is what uh, Barbara Morgan was talking about yesterday, that there's, it isn't so much in what happens to you as it is your attitude about what happens. And that attitude comes from someplace deep within you. And it, it, it's based on your experience and your choices. And they're not and, giving up. And no, they're you, you up. no, but it's not a kind of thoughtless uh, refusal. It's not a cloistered faith. 